rapid solar PV system using advanced PLLs. Uh, sorry to interrupt, sir. Can you please switch on your camera? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. thanks. Thank you, sir. Uh, Professor B. Chitte Babu received PhD degree in electrical engineering from National Institute of Technology, Raurkela, India in 2012. He was an assistant professor in the Department of Electrical Engineering, National Institute of Technology, Raurkela, India from 2007 to 2013. He had postdoctoral research appointment with the Wroclaw University of Science and Technology, Poland during 2013 to 14 and with the VSB Technical University of Ostrava, Czech Republic during 2014 to 15. Both of these appointments were sponsored by European Commission, UK. He was an assistant professor in Faculty of Engineering University of Nottingham, Malaysia campus, Malaysia from September 2016 to 2000, June 2018. Since June 2018, he has been an assistant professor grade one in an Indian Institute of Information Technology Design and Manufacturing, Kanchipuram, India. He was a visiting researcher at the Poland, uh, Politecnico di Milano, Italy during 2015 and visiting scientist at Yildiz Technology, uh, Technical University, Turkey during 2019. He was a recipient of Young System Scientist Award 2019 sponsored by System Society of India. And also he received IEEE MAS Best, Best uh, Researcher Award from IEEE Madras Section, India during February 2021. Recently, he has been appointed as an Editor-in-Chief of International Journal of Ambient Energy, Taylor and Francis Publishers. And also he serves as an Associate Editor of peer-reviewed peer, uh, SCI journals, including IET Engineering, Spinger, and Energy Source Part A, etc. His current research interests include power electronic application in smart distribution grid containing renewable energy sources, design of low power photovoltaic system, including MPPT algorithm, control, and grid integration of renewable energy system. Thank you, sir. Now I invite Professor B. Chitti Babu, sir, to uh, give his lecture. It's over. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Ma'am, should I switch up the video? Uh, let it be on. No, sir. Uh, let, sir, let it uh, switch on. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, is it visible? Yes, sir. But okay, uh, okay. I make it full view. Sir, oh, can you please uh, full screen your slide? Yeah, yeah, I did it. Okay, sir. Is, is it visible now? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay. Okay, very good morning to all of you. And uh, thank you uh, from Sir <coughs> Mona Lisa Patnaik, so who is my, who was my colleague at NIT Roadkela. And uh, thank you, madam. And actually, voluntarily, I mean, I have asked Madam to include one of the season. That is what Madam has given me an opportunity to share my experience on a grid synchronization of grid tight solar PV system using three filter based phase locked loop. And of course, the topic may be quite in line with the, uh, the title of the short term course, as I think many, many of the prominent professors, they might have shared their knowledge and the experience on uh, microgrid control and uh, different converter topologies and the power quality improvement in all aspects. But I am going to deliver a talk on a uh, grid synchronization of grid tight solar PV system. Of course, the uh, grid as it receives power from the solar PV system. So of course, it may not be an appropriate with the microgrid. So this is a grid connected solar PV system. Many of the researchers are intentionally working on this area of grid integration of solar PV system. So, of course, it's a quite emerging and quite interesting area. Uh, many of the researchers are intensively carrying on. As I have been with this Triple uh, in Kanjipuram, Chennai, as an assistant professor since June 2018, and I have developed uh, one kilowatts grid connected solar PV research lab here in Triple ATTM Kanjipuram. It is funded by TST Cerebra. 
So under my supervision, uh, two scholars have been awarded PhD and currently about four scholars are working in this area as my interest on control and grid integration of solar PV. Of course, uh, few, uh, two of the scholars are working in control part and one of the scholars was working in a grid synchronization and further we are extending the work for uh, grid integration of solar PV, including the grid fault as well. That is what this has a common uh, um, an area with the power electronics as well as the power system background. Yes, let me come to a point of the renewable power generation integration and all of us are aware that the renewable energy is, is one of the very prominent energy source for mitigating global warming and CO2 emissions and also and to meet the future energy demand and all of us know that uh, uh, by March 2023, the total installed capacity was about uh, 180 gigawatts power in India. You know, India is the third largest power producer in, producer in the world. And out of that, about 40 percentage of the total installed capacity, including large hydro from uh, renewable energy sources, particularly from uh, solar photovoltaic and wind energy. And these two sources are a very prominent green energy sources, and especially they generate power in terms of megawatts level. Uh, that is what they are basically a large scale power generation systems. Okay. And however, as the government has taken a resolution by 2030, they wanted to make it about 50 percentage of the total installed capacity from the uh, renewable energy sources. It's about uh, at least 20 percentage from solar photovoltaic and 15 percentage from and wind energy and again 10 to 15 from the hydro, large hydropower plant. And by 2070, we should make a net zero I mean, carbon, and that is what the government has taken an initiative. So the, the, the area is very emerging area, and also we encounter a number of problems while integrating renewable energy sources. And all of us know that the possible problem in integrating renewable energy is the intermittent nature and the solar photovoltaic, of course, uh, as it converts the solar energy into the electrical energy. Uh, by employing a PV panel as it works with the so photovoltaic effect. And the uh, energy is, of course, it's a byproduct of the solar energy. So universe of energy is what is called the sun. Of course, it's a byproduct of solar energy as it is available on the climate. And, uh, and due to that, it, it causes the problem of intermittency in the power generation. And because of this intermittency, they cannot be directly connected with the utility grid because they produce a variable a AC power via power electronics converters with a variable voltage and variable frequency. But however, the utility grid, it needs a constant voltage and constant frequency, right, for all the load which are being connected at the point of common coupling. And moreover, the generation unit not aligned with the load pattern. As, as I mentioned that the, the solar PV has produced a variable DC power and that can be directly connected with the load. For example, as we charge the battery with the solar photovoltaic, as a solar cell that produces variable output voltage and current, and hence the power that cannot be directly given to the battery, as the battery need a constant voltage for charging. So eventually it affects the performance of the battery. So that is what the load pattern never be aligned with the generation unit. This is the one of the technical difficulty encountered while uh, connecting a solar photovoltaic with the utility grid or with the battery. And there would be an, always a forecast uncertainty. So it's, it's, it's one of the difficulty. This is still in the, uh, unable to predict the solar energy potential as well as wind energy potential because uh, there is a problem of uncertainty. And as these kind of renewable energy sources are basically a fragile energy sources as they don't have any energy up, right? As, as simply uses uh, solar uh, cells uh, called the uh, simple P engines and diode. Basically, they are the static generator as it generates power. They virtually, uh, they don't have any energy up. Right. So because of this, and uh, whenever there would be a, uh, there would be uncertainty in the system, maybe changes in the load or maybe in the changes in the uh, solar PV output, and it was still, and it causes the problem in the response. All right. Uh, for example, an example of the fuel cell. You know, fuel cell uh, is an ultimate choice for the steady state performance. But as far as transient performance is concerned. Uh, fuel cell, it's not a kind of source for the transient uh, behavior because the response was very sluggish. This is one of the technical difficulty encountered in renewable power integration and voltage congestion during islanding. 
Right. So these are the possible problems in integrating renewable energy. Of course, we hope to uh, meet this challenge while integrating renewable energy. So that challenge is usually imposed by a power system operator called uh, DSO. They, they impose certain requirements in integrating renewable energy source with the utility grid. That requirements are called grid code requirements or grid code compliances, you know. So because uh, as you, you usually the renewable power generation are usually generated by the private firm and then then, then sell electricity to uh, electricity to the electricity authority all right of course the electricity authority or called the transmission system operators they impose certain requirements and then only the private firm they can sell power to the electricity board so that requirements are a grid code requirements that include controllable active and reactive power into the utility grid and grid synchronization with the improved power quality and the influence and grid stability and improved power quality and also quick response and the transient condition actually these requirements are not new because almost the oil the renewable energy was emerging for past couple of decades almost the, every country they have taken an initiative to impose certain requirements to the power generating i mean power generating companies and like us they have their own grid code compliances and canada they have their own grid code compliances ireland they have their own grid code compliances similarly in india even you could develop a grid code requirements in integrating solar photovoltaic or wind energy conversion system with the utility grid right and in apart from that uh, as you know in the transmission level uh, mostly we concentrate on the stability or in the distribution level we concentrate on power quality you know because we connect a non-linear load at the point of common coupling while renewable energy source like a solar photovoltaic or wind energy conversion system is, is feeding power to the utility grid and of course as the renewable as the non-linear load that interact with the utility grid and it causes the uh, diversion in the grid current waveform and of course the grid current is distorted and in addition to the voltage profile degradation right and uh, talking about the uh, voltage the rms value of the voltage at the point of utility and if the voltage level is between the yeah, nominal and 50 percentage of the nominal so the tripping time of the inverter should be one second of course 100 milliseconds for 50 hertz and if the voltage level is between 50 to 85 percentage then the tripping time would be about two seconds and the, if, if the voltage profile at the pcc is between 85 to 110 percentage mean then grid can be able to feed power to the utility grid or can feed power to the load without having any problem as as it mentions the continuous operation if the voltage is is quite overload i mean over voltage between 110 percentage and 135 percentage that the tipping time of the inverter will be about two seconds if not the inverter switches will be uh, having over voltage if the switch is snubber or is not working properly then the switches can be easily damaged and if the voltage level exceeds 135 percentage it should be tripled in 50 milliseconds right so these requirements are to be met by the inverter while integrating solar photovoltaic with a utility grid and beyond the voltage level even when the utility frequency is outside the range of plus or minus one hertz then the inverter should be ceased to energize the utility line within 0.2 seconds i mean 200 milliseconds yes as as from this one can understand that while integrating renewable power generation system with a utility grid these two key parameters must be controllable must be controlled and must be regulated because the the voltage ultimate the uh, ultimately the voltage profile at the point of common coupling that decides the power system reliability and whereas the frequency at the utility grid it decides the power system security so these two parameters must be instantaneously monitored and controlled right and beyond that when you connect a non-linear load at the point of common coupling even at the 50 percentage of the load the utility grid should have a power factor about at least 0.9 right this is an additional requirements in integrating renewable power generation with the utility grid so ultimately as the voltage and frequency are a control or variables in the utility grid the grid voltage and frequency should be estimated and monitored fast and accurate enough in order to cope up with the standard right so how you could be able to instantaneously track this voltage and the frequency 
this is a very essential component in implementing the control algorithm while integrating renewable power generation with the utility grid right as i mentioned the successful integration of renewable power generation system with the utility grid is possible by achieving grid code requirements as as i mentioned for meeting all the grid code requirements as i mentioned the first requirement is called instantaneous control of active and reactive power right so these two uh, parameters must be controlled indirectly we control a grid voltage and frequency right and and uh, by necessitating the active and reactive power regulations so that for a grid connected solar pv system that requires a fast and exact detection of phase and fundamental frequency of the grid voltage and current in order to generate the reference current signal for implementing a control strategy because as i mentioned that as 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 we are in a position to regulate an ac power that's it that is being injected into the utility grid in terms of active and reactive power via voltage and frequency control the control algorithm how you would be able to implement so for implementing such control strategy and how meticulously the control algorithm it, it generates the reference current you know that is what because any controller that is being implemented on the grid tied solar or grid tied wind energy conversion system it has cascaded control mechanism so cascaded control that means the outer voltage loop control and inner current control right so inner current control that it decides the dynamic result the response of the inverter so how you are precisely generating the reference curve that reference current generation is very essential in implementing the control algorithm of the inverter so that we are meeting the grid code requirements that is what is called a grid synchronization so grid synchronization it meant that as the control algorithm what we propose on the inverter that synchronize the grid frequency with the inverter output frequency that is what is called the grid synchronization in other words we can say that how fast you are able to track the fundamental frequency of the phase of the grid signal that is also what is called the grid synchronization so one can understand what is grid synchronization right as as i mentioned the desired grid synchronization technique it must detect the phase angle of the fundamental frequency as fast as possible while adequately eliminating higher order harmonic components all right so with these objectives we could come across a number of literatures on grid synchronization algorithm in integrating uh, solar pv or wind energy conversion system and proposing a kind of pll is basically an adaptive pll when there would be an uncertainty in the load which is being connected at the point of common coupling and moreover the algorithm what we could implement should be very simple and realizable in the practice right as that we have developed uh, here and the accurate detection of the phase angle of the utility grid signal and smoothly tracking the phase and the frequency variations and proficiently detect the current harmonics and extract the active and reactive component of the grid current and it forcefully reject harmonics and disturbances and to extract the symmetrical components right so for meeting these four objectives how we developed an adaptive pln for uh, grid synchronization of grid tied solar pv system that is what we have done yes let's start with the very fundamentals on the grid synchronization actually the technique is not new of course as we could recall the fundamentals on the analog circuit as we studied about the base lock loop as base lock loop is basically a simple electronic control system that works with the feedback you know so what it meant for example in the frequency synthesizer in the uh, uh, communication system and how we could i mean how we could synchronize the receiver frequency and along with the what is called the frequency of the audible so that frequency synchronization is possible with the help of phase lock loop so this has been used in practice while the communication was emerging and still the people were looking up an alternate use the phase lock loop in the electrical systems right and even even in um, in control of induction motor drive or even in the switch mode power supplies or maybe even an active power filter and we in we we invariably invariably needs to estimate the fundamental phase and the fundamental frequency so this has been used in practice right as it has a three important component called the phase detector and loop filter and vco and the phase detector it is simply detect the reference of the input phase and along with the output phase of the voltage control oscillator simply it is a comparator so it compares the actual signal and the reference signal that produces an error in the form of voltage that voltage is being given to the loop filter so what is the role of loop filter loop filter is is basically a low pass filter 
because as we 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 sense or we 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 are monitoring a fundamental voltage and frequency corresponding to 50 hertz of course the 50 hertz is a low frequency profile so this is like a low pass filter so it will fill, it will filter out all high frequency harmonic component when when these components are available at the output of the phase detector then then the, the output which is being given to the voltage controlled oscillator as an input that is called the vo Right, then the VCO con voltage control oscillator that produces the control signal corresponding to the VVCO, what is called the output voltage of the VVCO that must be well looped with the VO. Right, so once VO is well connected or well aligned with the VVCO, then the PLL is said to be locked range so that it could be able to detect the fundamental phase corresponding to the output phase this is what is called a phase lock combo as i mentioned is a phase detector is a loop i mean comparator and the loop filter is simply a low pass filter that remove i mean unwanted harmonic or unwanted noise signals right of course it is it is basically a first order you can say that a first order filter what is called a pa controller that can be used as a loop filter so the, this PLL, uh, yeah, as I mentioned, the filter output voltage, what is called VO, that controls the frequency of VCO, that is what is called PVCO, right? And 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 this is the functional diagram of the phase lock loop, and this is corresponding the mathematical structure of the phase lock loop, as the input signal is what is called A sine omega t plus theta, and that that compares with the the, the the signal that is being extracted from the voltage controlled oscillator, then that the error is being given to the loop filter, and the loop filter produces the control voltage, what is called the VVO, VVO corresponding to the output signal right so in this way we are able to track the fundamental phase angle of the input signal this is corresponding mathematical building block is available here this is for the phase lock i mean phase detector and loop filter and voltage control oscillator yes now according to the fundamental analogy of this phase lock loop one can understand how fast this phase lock loop is able to Track or the extract the fundamental phase that depends on the controller, what is called the KP and the KA. So, how you are meticulously designed this low pass filter, then accordingly it will track the fundamental phase. That is what the dynamic response of this phase lock loop it, it ultimately depends on the loop filter, I mean the proportional gain and the integral gain. So, once the gains are optimally tuned according to the input or nature of the input signal, then it is able to track the fundamental phase. This is the corresponding mathematical equation for the each block of the phase lock loop. And one can understand that the, 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 the difference in voltage, what is called the VD, is from the phase detector. It has a component AKD by 2 with the 5 input as well as 5 output. It implies the difference in voltage is zero when the input phase is same as that of the output phase. Then there won't be no error. Then the PSL, PLL is able to track the fundamental phase. Right. Now come to yeah, the, I mean, the estimation of the phase and the three-phase AC system as the three-phase uh, source having the three-phase voltage ABC. Then we then we are we, we are decomposing this ABC that is that 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 uh, three-phase AC coordinates are into. D in the coordinates in the D and the Q axis that is called the DQ transformation, that is what is called the part transformation, then we could be able to detect the magnitude as well as the phase angle. So the D axis voltage that represents the magnitude or the, uh, the peak value and VSQ is what is called the Q axis component that represents the phase. Right. So, and the, yeah, the, the phase is instantaneously feedback to the transformation as while transferring ABC into DQ, ultimately we need to estimate the value of theta. Right. So, this is the basic building, I mean, basic black diagram of the SRR PLL as we are transferring ABC to DQ transformation. This is the corresponding SRR PLL, the schematic diagram. And of course, here also you can understand that the, the dynamics of the PLL it depends on KP as well as KB. I mean the proposal and the integral gain of the loop filter, right? This is the corresponding phase transformation. And as you know that near synchronization, what do you mean near synchronization? When your estimated phase is, is equal to the input phase corresponding to omega t, that is what is called the argument of sinusoid. You know, that is what is called angular frequency or what is called the argument of sinusoid. One, your theta is well 
aligned with the omega, then the system is said to be synchronization. So that inverter frequency is well matched with uh, what is called the utility grid frequency. But however, according to the nature of the waveform, I mean, nature of, nature of the mathematical equation, you were, you were, you were, you were, the VS, that is the source DQ transformation, that component it has positive sequence as well as the negative sequence along with the fundamental phase that is called the minus theta as well as minus two omega t. So what is minus two omega t? And this component is corresponding to double frequency oscillations. And this component is corresponding to the fundamental, right? This is what the positive sequence, the, the supply voltage has a positive sequence voltage waveform corresponding to the fundamental and negative sequence voltage waveform corresponding to double frequency oscillations, right? Now, one can understand from this, I mean, from these equations, and if your input voltage is balanced three phase, you see then the PLL can able to track the phase very accurately that you see the corresponding voltage is about 100 volt and the corresponding the phase error is zero so it means PLL can able to track the fundamental phase angle but when three phase AC voltages are unbalanced now as you connect to a nonlinear load or maybe a, a three phase four wire system of the distribution once you connect a nonlinear load with the different phases with a different load you can understand that the PLL cannot track the value of fundamental phase you know so and there would be a significant deviation in the estimated wave this is because of double frequency oscillations yes this is because of double frequency oscillation right and uh, and one would observe that due to double frequency oscillation that presence in the, I mean, the utility, I mean, grid or utility phase of the phase lock loop, you, you cannot implement the control algorithm accurately, right? You can see because of this and your, your AC voltage waveform is varying sinusoidally. That is what the instantaneous, the average output voltage seems to be zero. And moreover, the VSQ is not equal to zero. There would be a considerable error. Right. This is what the difficulties encountered with SRI PLL for grid synchronization when the, the grid voltages are unbalanced. Right. And with this, and one can understand what, then what are the features of good synchronization tool. Either you can use a phase lock loop or maybe the very fundamental tool what we could use in electronics that is called a zero crossing detector. You know, zero crossing detector is one of the excellent tool for grid synchronization or estimating the phase. If your input voltage are purely sinusoidal, right? You can you can you can track the zero crossing and accordingly, and you can you can able to track the wave. You know, the many of the cases in the voltage source inverter, like an intelligent power model, and they use a zero crossing detector in estimating the fundamental phase while generating the PWM waveform for the inverter switches. You know. The inverter, the switches PW pulse with modulated waveform having the phase sequence of ROIB that has to be well synchronized with the inverter output voltage waveform corresponding to ROIB. But if the I mean inverter output voltage having the phase sequence of ROIB, but the PWM what you would generate from the control algorithm or from the driver circuit is the phase sequence of RBY, eventually it causes circulating current. Right. That is why the zero crossing detector simply they uses in any intelligent power model, especially for synchronizing the pulse width modulated waveform of the inverter switches with inverter output voltage. Right. So from that, one can easily conclude that the synchronization tool in estimating the fundamental phase of the frequency should have these all important features. First of all, any synchronization tool you can use to track the fundamental phase in integrating renewable power generation, it should have a zero steady state error for the phase angle as well as for frequency variations, you know, and the, the algorithm, it should efficiently track the fundamental phase and the frequency variation of the utility grid and it has to forcefully reject the third order harmonic, you know. The third order harmonic is inherently present in the utility grid whenever you connect any non-linear loop. And not only that, as, as we propose a pulse width modulation, it's an inherent non-linear switching. It again it causes a third order harmonic voltage presence in the utility grid. Right. So whatever be the algorithm you are proposing for detecting the fundamental phase, it has to reject a third harmonic component and, and, and that disturbance occurs in the naturally in the grid signal. And moreover, the proposed uh, grid synchronization tool or the PLL, it should have good dynamic performance under grid voltage variations and harmonics. See, whatever you come across the literatures on the grid synchronization tool using advanced phase lock flow, the difficulties are encountered in dynamic response of the system. For example, when when high frequency harmonics are injected into the utility grid, 
So how proposed PLL can able to take the fundamental phase? It's a challenging task. And uh, beyond that, and beyond that, then the grid is under fault. There would be a, an unsymmetrical fault talkers like like line to ground fault on the utility grid. How PLN can be able to track the fundamental phase is still it is a challenging task. That is why any PLN you propose for a grid synchronization of renewable power generation system, ultimately it should have a good dynamic response when the grid is under highly nonlinear. When the, the when the grid is under disturbances or when the grid is under abnormal conditions. And whatever that the very important characteristics of the synchronization tool that should be realizable in practice right so to meet these all five important features of the grid synchronization tool the number of resources have i mean directed a lot of literature i mean a lot of research on this and we could develop certain uh, pll here in triple atm kanchipuram and we could do and we could publish the papers in transaction as well that 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 work what we could do here in triple atm kanchipuram that i am going to present it here right i mean the objectives of our research is to obtain the fundamental frequency and the phase angle with a good or first transient response to attain the superior system stability with the help of proposed PLN. Obviously, the proposed PLN that works well with the grid abnormalities, including high frequency harmonic uh, component and interharmonics under the DC offset, any frequency variations or any voltage unbalances, still the proposed PLN can be able to track the fundamental phase without compromising the stability of the grid. Right. So to comparative investigation of the proposed PLL and the state of art of the PLL that has been made during grid abnormalities. As I mentioned, that include voltage, uh, high frequency harmonic injection, interharmonics, uh, DC offset, and it shows efficacy of the proposed PLL as well. And moreover, this proposed PLL, the algorithm is developed in the MATLAB Simulink through DSpace 0104 platform so that we could make uh, hardware research in the hardware in low platform. Uh, for the uh, laboratory prototype, right? And th this is the schematic diagram, grid tight solar photovoltaic system. Yeah, by the way, uh, dear participants, are you able to follow me? Uh, my, my flow is fine, or still I, I should a bit reduce the speed, please? Yes, sir, it's okay. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, the schematic tag diagram of grid tight solar PV system is here, and the solar PV array that generates a DC power and that is being given to the utility grid via two stage power converter system this is what is called two stage two stage it meant the first stage is a dc to dc conversion and the second stage is a dc to ac conversion and that is being a, 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 that is being isolated in a dc with the help of dc link capacitor this, this topology is quite popular for large scale power generation system as the as the input the source side having a dc to dc converter ultimate aim of this Boost converter is to boost the low voltage uh, solar PV into the high voltage DC link. In addition to that, in addition to implement the maximum power point tracking, this DC to DC boost converter is used. And assuming that as, as it is working with uh, the voltage gain not more than 0.5, and this uh, DC to DC boost converter is enough to boost the voltage and in implementing MPPT as well, then the power available at the DC link and at a high voltage that will be inverted into AC then that that AC power is being injected into the utility grid via three phase voltage source inverter all right so this boost converter is what is called a source side converter as it is transferring power from solar pv to the dc link and the three phase voltage source inverter this is what is called a grid interactive power converter because this fellow is interacting with the utility grid you know that is one so the entire grid connection requirements are the grid code compliances are made are achieved by incorporating the control on this voltage source inverter. That is what this inverter can act as a grid interactive power converter or it forms a grid feeding inverter or it forms a grid forming inverter or maybe sometimes in the microgrid architecture as well. Right. So the, the, how you could be able to implement the control algorithm on this voltage source inverter, that is a challenging task because this fellow is playing a very pivotal role in integrating solar PV with the utility grid. That is what, so how you are able to precisely track the fundamental phase angle, that is what we use as a phase lock. 
So grid synchronization as what we proposed that the PLL that is meticulously estimating the fundamental phase theta and the fundamental frequency F and as once we have the fundamental phase and the fundamental frequency then the control algorithm can be implemented for the grid side converter controller. That is what estimating the theta is a role of proposed PLL irrespective of the grid conditions. Then then, then then the controller that produces the pwm pulses as we could implement with space vector pulse with modelism then 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 it produces the pwm pulses to this three three phase two leg i mean sorry three leg two level inverter then ultimately the control algorithm can be implemented so that successful integration of solar pv with the utility grid is possible right and uh, and, and the, the load the, the, the load at the, the point at which the uh, linear or nonlinear loads are connected is what is called a point of common coupling right so invariably the voltage at the point of common coupling should have a i mean a nominal level without i mean a rapid change in the value that is what the voltage profile must be maintaining constant Right. In addition to that, the three phase grid voltage and the frequency can also be maintained constant. That is what so independent control of voltage and the frequency that needs the controller, that controller needs the reference current that is possible by your proposed PLL. Right. And now we proposed one PLL is, 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 is basically, you know, and the estimating the theta or the estimating the fundamental frequency, what is called the F. It's, 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 it's not new as well because many might have worked in classical power system and they proposed uh, the literature the, the literature says uh, they proposed kind of algorithm in detecting the fundamental frequency in the power system as well that is what the frequency estimation or the frequency detection or classification now uh, power frequency uh, I mean, power frequency classification or the detection that also is coming under the the signal processing right so invariably this is one of the application of digital signal processing in renewable energy systems because as we are instantaneously monitoring a three phase grid voltage you know because you, you know of the grid voltage that is being sensed by the sensor before it is being uh, before uh, before sensing then we will have a kind of instrument transformers you know it's what's called a, a potential and uh, a current transformer right then these two transformers it it, it it measures the grid voltages and current for the measurement and the uh, control purposes then that voltage and current is being sensed by the uh, current and voltage sensors then then, then then algorithm starts right as we are assuming the three phase voltages are sen sensed by the voltage sensor then as as this is going to be implemented in the digital platform you know because the control algorithm what we implement in the grid inter grid interactive solar pv system is the digital control because we use as invariably a apga controller or maybe a digital signal processor what is called a dsp controller right so the three phase ac voltages are being transformed into I mean, voltage in the alpha beta that is called a stationary reference frame with the help of ABC to alpha beta transformation that is called the Clark transformation. Then and we are we are estimating the V alpha and the V beta and the V alpha is corresponding to the I mean what is called the magnitude and the V beta is corresponding to the what is called the theta right so and here and after is being transformed from ABC to alpha beta then we, we have a PLL what is called a I mean sliding constant discrete Fourier transform based PLL of course it is it is a recursive PLL and it has a, a bank pass filter characteristics and we are we are we are decomposing the components of alpha beta into real and the imaginary component of course the imaginary component is nothing but a noise signal that we are pro we are processing and then, then the, the signal which is being available at IM that is being given to the phase detector and the base detector it compares the actual with the reference then the error is being produced then the error is being given to the what is called the transfer function in the form of z domain of course it is it is a digital filter then and we are we are we are generating the frequency then then the 25.6 kilohertz is nothing but a, the grid enabling frequency that is available here then the pa control is being given to the again limiter and the limiter is is what is called yeah, i mean the, the, it, it, it is like a hysteresis band and it, it makes certain threshold for the error then then alpha is produced then it is given to the nco what is called a numerically controlled oscillator so it is again it is a pll PLL means what? A PLL consists of phase detector, low filter, and VCO. 
as it is being implemented in the digital domain so it is basically what is called a digital phase lock flow or, or we can say that the phase detector loop filter or the ngo are realizable in the digital domain and hence it is what is called the adp in the as well what is called the all digital phase lock flow and you can and as this is what is called a pre filter because the signal or the voltage which is being given to the phase lock loop for the measurement before that it is being I mean, processed through SGFT, SGDFT. This is what is called a pre-filter. You know, pre-filter means the any signal that is being filtered out before that you will have another yeah, kind of filter on the source side, what is called a pre-filter, right? And now the, the signal is available. That is what is called X sub N is the input signal and that we are giving to AGDFT PLN. And, and we have the, I mean, as it is implemented in the Z domain, of course, it is the digital domain. This filter is a digital filter. Right, and we have a n number of signals and z to the power minus n that we impose a delay on the signal. Then, then this form what is called the com filter. Then, then the, 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 the output of this phase detector that is being given to the I mean the what is called the PE controller with the limiter, and finally we are producing a real and imaginary component of the input signal. Right, this is what the structure of the AGDFT PLL, and moreover it's not new. And this is the very classical algorithm and that is being used for I mean, grid synchronization and this is the corresponding discrete um, transfer function in the discrete domain for this particular HGDFT PLL. And here, as I mentioned, this is a z to the power minus n that, that, that uh, performs the delaying operation. That is what. So 1 minus z to the power minus n is what is called the COM filter that decides the delay where n is the number of samples and corresponding to the clock frequency of the pro processor and the frequency index is assumed to be k is equal to one right and if we have if we have analyzed the stability of the uh, base lock loop and here what we have done in the delay we have proposed the second order delay in in addition to the com filter this is what yeah i mean this is what the modified hdft pll by us you know, so in the, in the classical, I mean, EGTFT PLL, there won't be no second order delay introduced. So it means if your input signal is sinusoidal or non sinusoidal, having the frequency component, which are integer fundamental, integer level of the fundamental, then, then the EGTFT filter can precisely estimate the fundamental frequency. But once your input signal or the grid signal has a non integer frequency component, what is called a, a interharmonic component, then the AGTFT filter is failed to detect the fundamental phase. So that is what this modified AGTFT PLL we have proposed for estimating the fundamental phase when the grid's voltage contains interharmonic component, what is called a non integer, fun, non -integer fundamental frequency component. That is what this is exactly a modified AGTFT filter. The correspond, I mean, it is a corresponding. The I mean, uh, uh, what is called the transfer function is available. Then we could uh, we could define its dynamic boundaries. Uh, that is what is called stability boundaries. As I told you that, where while estimating the fundamental phase at the frequency of the utility grid, the PLL dynamics is very important because your input voltage is varying instantaneously. And when the grid is under disturbances and estimating the fundamental phase is a challenging task. That is what so one can understand in designing a phase lock loop how you could be able to design a PLL which is extremely dynamic. That is what the dynamic response is very essential. And for that, we have taken the I mean the I mean the controller gain on the PE controller, and we could define the dynamic boundaries for the different value of proportional as well as integral gain. Right. As, as you can see, the proportional gain, the value is between 0 and 500. Here, it shows the boundary is stable. And when, when the, the integral gain and corresponding to the cutoff frequency, that is omega, fi, omega, this region is going to be unstable region. So accordingly, the proportional as well as integral gain must be tuned. That is what, so we proposed a symmetrical optimization method for tuning the value of proportional as well as integral gain of modified AGTFT filter so that we could source this AGT, modified AGTFT PLL having a yeah, bandpass characteristics. As I mean, exactly it acts as a bandpass filter so that we could be able to filter out any harmonic component which are being injected at the utility grid stage. Right, and, and 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 based on that, and we could make the I mean uh, transfer function for the real as well as imaginary 
I mean, component in the digital domain, and we have proposed. I mean, we have studied the body plot as well as the root locus. You can understand that your your input signal, the, the red color is corresponding to the fundamental, right? And that is what is called a modified EGTFT PL. So we have compared the dynamic response or the filtering response of the different state part of the PLL is available in the literature. The blue that indicates the EGTFT PLL, and uh, green that indicates HP high frequency i mean uh, pll and another one is hi hdo pll these are all state of art of the pll available in the literature and the red that indicates the proposed pll now you see this is corresponding to the fundamental phase so it, i mean this uh, the the pll except the green either hi hdo or agdft or modified agdft they, they easily track the fundamental frequency at the fundamental phase Right, and this is corresponding to the 100 hertz, what is called the second order harmonics, and this is third order, and this is the fifth order. So likewise, when there would be an interharmonics, so this is fundamental, and this is 100 hertz. In between, if 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 there would be a, there would be a harmonic component, only the red, what is called a modified EGTFT filter, can can be able to track the non-integer frequency component, but other filters they are unable to detect. That is the superiority of this proposed PLL. And uh, correspondingly, we could show that there are 128 zeros, right? 120, sorry, 120, uh, I mean, the, the, the poles are exactly placed in the unit circle that shows that the filtering is excellent. Moreover, it shows, yes, and there are two conjugate poles that cancel the zeros at z is e to the power plus or minus j 2 by, by 118. So where 118 is the 128 zeros available corresponding to the, I mean, what is called the clock frequency of the D space, that is 6.4 kilohertz. All right. And now, now these 128 zeros that are equally spread around around the unit circle of z domain and hence you are, you are the proposed PLR it takes to stable operating condition when the grid is subjected to non integer frequency component. Right. So now understanding that the proposed PLL is dynamically stable, right? And whenever when the grid is uh, subjected to non integer harmonic component, and also it ensues a faster dynamic response. And moreover, it is the computation is quite simple as compared to the uh, state of art of the PLL. Right now, we could develop this uh, PLL in the MATLAB simulation and uh, considering the three phase AC voltage, the 450 volt is equivalent to one per unit. The fundamental frequency is about 50 hertz, and the fundamental frequency is corresponding to the angular frequency of 2 by F. As I have told you, that the sampling frequency of the D, D space 1104 DSP controller card is about 6.4. So, considering the fundamental of 50 hertz, so the number of samples would be 128. And the enabling frequency, as we have considered, is about 25.6 for 128 samples, right? And considering, and we have studied for the different scenarios of the uh, grid voltage condition. First of all, let us consider the response during voltage sag condition, right? About 30 percentage of the voltage sag that is being created at the three phase AC voltage between 0.4 and 0.5. Right, and you can you can observe that. So now during this voltage sag condition. Now, now you can see the I mean the PLL, the state of art of the PLL called HA, HDO PLL, HP, ES PLL, and AGTFT PLL, and modified AGTFT PLL. So modified AGTFT PLL can track the fundamental frequency very accurately. But whereas the state of art of the PLL, you can see that there will be a considerable steady state error, and also there will be a tracking the fundamental phase is quite slow, right? And this is the frequency error. You can see the frequency error. Frequency error is completely zero for modified EGTFT PLL. But the other state of the art of the PLL, there would be a considerable phase error as well as the frequency error. You can understand in estimating the amplitude of the phase, you know, while the phase is decreased from one per unit to, I mean, and it's about 30 percentage, I mean, 0 0.7. See how your, your blue line is a modified EGTFT PLL. It is exactly tracking the reference so that the response is very faster and it doesn't have any steady state error. It doesn't have any peak overshoot. And moreover, when a three phase voltage is th under 30 percentage sag, it is exactly tracking the fundamental frequency, right? Now consider the case of two, that is a high frequency harmonic injection. So at 0.4, we have injected three 
carbonic component one along with the fundamental we have injected 0.3 percentage of the fundamental the third harmonic component and 25 percentage of fifth order harmonic component and 17 percentage of seventh order harmonic component and 13 percentage of ninth order harmonic component and eight percentage of 11th order harmonic component that are being injected at the utility grid along with the fundamental frequency now the, even when the, when the grid is subjected to high frequency harmonic injection, see the blue line that is called a modified HDFP PLL is exactly tracking the fundamental phase with negligible phase error. And you can see the phase angle, it is exactly like a ramp. So this is what the beauty of a modified HDFP PLL, even under harmonics or under voltage second design, still it is meticulously tracking the fundamental phase and the frequency, right? And this is the response of interharmonics. This is what a heart of the proposed PLL. Because any PLL can work for any I mean, adverse situation of the utility grid, but this is the PLL can be able to track the fundamental when the grid is subjected to interharmonics. So I mean, about at a 0.4 second, we have injected 8% of 5.5 harmonics and 4% of 7.5 harmonic along with the fundamental till 0.5 second. Observe the three phase voltage waveform, it is highly distorted. You know, the interharmonics is the, the source of interharmonics is, 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 is seems to be very important in the grid connected renewable power generation systems because the interharmonic components, you know, they're quite dangerous in measurements, especially on the uh, transformer that is being utilized to measure the voltage uh, or, or the current, you know, current voltage transformer that is, they are basically called the instrument transformer, you know, there would be an error in measuring or, 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 or measuring because of harmonic presence that is called interharmonics. And the sources of interharmonics are any high nonlinear load if connected at the point of common coupling, this causes. That is why nowadays, these interharmonics are quite popular along with any, I mean, uh, what is called integer harmonic component in, in uh, modern power system. Right, that is what we have studied, including interharmonic condition, and we have particularly studied with interharmonic. You can see the frequency response of the fundamental frequency estimation with the modified HGTFT PLL is extremely good as compared to other state of the PLL. You can see the error produced by other state of out of the PLL, but the modified HGTFT PLL do not produce any error. So ultimately, the modified HGTFT PLL it track the fundamental phase very accurately. Right, and this is the response during DC offset. You know, DC offset is an another power quality. I mean, uh, problem associated with the grid connected system because the DC offset means while inverter is injecting a sinusoidal current at the utility grid, still it can inject certain DC uh, component as well. DC component corresponding to the zero frequency. So this DC component that is being injected in the utility grid from the inverter output because of dead time of the inverter. Because we have a, there is a dead time in implementing PWM waveform while, while generating the PWM waveform for the two switches are connected with the same leg because of the dead time to avoid the I mean, uh, simultaneous firing of two switches, right? So that dead time, it causes the DC upset, what is called the DC, I mean, zero frequency component. So now we injected a 0.5 percentage at the A phase and the minus 0.3 percentage with the B phase and the minus 2 percentage with the C phase till 0.5 second. You could understand that now three phase voltages are distorted. So under this condition, see modified AGTFT PLL is completely tracking the fundamental field. It's, it's the, you know, the response is extremely fast. You know, you do not have any error as well, right? And see the phase error is completely zero. And HAHDO PLL, the error is extremely high. And the HP PS PLL still it produces a little bit error, but the proposed PLL doesn't have any phase error as well as the frequency error. And you're tracking the fundamental phase very accurately. Yes. Now, this algorithm that has been developed in the MATLAB simulink and that to be done for the real time hardware and the experimental setup through the platform, what is called a hardware in loop simulation mode. So that you can you, you you can you can be allowed to virtually validate the I mean the compilations and code by an integral generation of the individual test input which may be uploaded to the controller card 
and this is what and the, the one kilowatts pv panel that is being i mean installed at the outside of the laboratory and still we have uh, i mean uh, the pv emulator as well and we have a pv pv emulator also and so that we have uh, the power outlet from the pv array and that is being given to the boost converter and the along with the three phase pwm voltage source inverter then the output is being connected with the util i mean the load via yeah, i mean the virtually creating the pl i mean what is called a point of common coupling via three phase varia and we have a interfacing inductor and also the current probe i mean current and voltage sensor and we are able to sense the voltages and we have developed the algorithm and the matlab sibling through host pc then then then, then the, the controller car being i mean integrated with the i mean the driver side code that is via d space 0104 controller car as we use a yeah, dso for storing and analyzing all the voltage and current waveform right and but first we studied without connecting any uh, solar pv we have taken the dc power supply as a constant dc to the inverter then we have studied and further the algorithm it works very fine then we were trying with the uh, uh, i mean um, real time solar pv but still we face a difficulty because the solar the irradiation it changes rapidly so for, then further we thought of to buy uh, what is called uh, i mean um, solar pv simulator that is being a startup of iit delhi then uh, we have done the algorithm and we have studied uh, uh, in our laboratory and the uh, the results are presented here yes now this is the experimental result there's a hardware in loop result during voltage sack and you can understand that as we have created 30 percentage voltage sack here and still and the the the, the pll that tracks the i mean the fundamental input voltage you can see here and it is exactly detecting 0.7 percentage almost all pll can track but still the, here the response would be much better you can observe here i mean the the, the setting time is about 30, 60 milliseconds with the hsdo pll and the hf pll the settling time would be 32 millisecond in estimating the fundamental frequency when the three phase voltages are subjected to 30 percentage voltage sag. and a conventional hgtft pll it takes about 40 millisecond uh, in tracking the fundamental phase or the frequency, but a modified HGTFT PLL it doesn't take any I mean intentional uh, time or intentional time delay. It is able to track the fundamental frequency very accurately and very fastly. Right, and this is the fundamental estimated phase angle. These are the in phase and quadrature component. They are called ID and D and the QHS component. And you can observe the QHS component, D and QHS components are. They are basically orthogonal component. They are, um, I mean, sinusoidal in nature, but they should have a 90 degree phase And that we can see here, the observed waveform is extremely sinusoidal with the 90 degree phase shift between D and the QHS component. Right. And this is the hardware and loop results during high frequency harmonic injection as we have injected third harmonic, fifth harmonic, and seventh harmonic here. So your, your three phase voltages are at, I mean, highly distorted with, uh, I mean, high frequency harmonic component. Right. At this stage, you see HHDOPLL is unable to track the fundamental. There is a error in estimating the fundamental frequency. And again, HF PSPLL also shows certain error on the frequency. And HGTFTPLL, the response is somewhat better than these two. But however, body fit HGTFTPLL, the error, error is, seems to be zero. And, the, and uh, it is it is exactly tracking the fundamental I mean, phase. So the grid frequency THD is about 3.6%. So the, the three phase grid voltage is having the THD of 3.6 percentage under this stage because your proposed PLL can be able to nullify or filter out all high frequency components which are being injected into the utility grid. This is the corresponding estimated phase as well as the phase angle. And you can see the uh, before it is being give, uh, uh, estimated with uh, proposed PLL in phase as well as quadrature axis components are highly distracted. But once the, the, the base estimation is done with the, the proposed HGTFT PLL, then this seems to be sinusoid. Right. And this is the result during interharmonics. So that is the beauty of the proposed PLL. Even at the interharmonic voltage is present in the utility grid, you, the fundamental frequency can be exactly estimated and measured by modified HGTFT PLL as compared to other state part of the PLL. Right, and you can see the estimated phase as well as the phase angle. They are quite ramp as well as the sinusoidal phase. And these are the in phase and quadrature axis components before it is being estimated with the help of modified HDFT PLL. And the corresponding THD of the grid voltage are to be uh, seems to be 2.3 percentage. This is one of the uh, beauty of modified modified HDFT PLL.
All right, and this is the response during DC offset as, as we have injected a certain DC offset with the utility grid voltage and again the three phase voltage are become unbalanced and distorted under this stage see how the uh, the, uh, the, the PLLs can able to estimate the fundamental frequency of 50 hertz. see and uh, moving average filter based PLL and the other PLL they are able to produce considerable error but uh, and the proposed PLL can be able to track only the fundamental frequency. Right, and this is the corresponding in phase as soon as quadrature axis component. The corresponding THT during DC offset is less than one percentage, even 0.5 percentage. Right, and this is the performance comparison. This is the comparison of the different PLL as well as the proposed PLL, the state of art of the PLL called the HAHDO PLL that is being proposed in reference 19 and the HPFS PLL that is being proposed in 20 and the AGDFT PLL that has been proposed in reference 21 and the proposed PLL, you can uh, you, you, you observe the performance in, in, in the form of simulation as well as in the hardware in loop with the different power quality events like a voltage sag, harmonic, high frequency harmonic injection, interharmonics and a DC upset. You could observe the response would be much better in terms of frequency overshoot, settling time, and the THD in all sense, the performance is much better. That's, this is what the, one of the extensive study with the modified AGTFT PLL. This uh, work has been published in ITP transactions and instrumentation and measurement. Right. So, of course, uh, such a summary from this modified AGTFT PLL that to elevate the non integer frequency component called interharmonics, and we have proposed a comp filter with K value of 2 and that three degree of freedom that is called the second order fraction and delay using the Lagrange interpolation method that we have developed for this modified AGTFT PLL. At a fixed sampling frequency, the modified AGTFT PLL it extract the fundamental frequency from the distorted grid voltages and current. It can easily eliminate the harmonic, interharmonic DC offset components as well. And moreover, this modified AGTFT PLL, it largely reduces the frequency overshoot as well as settling time as compared to the state of art of the PLL. And this work has been completely tested and done in real time through hardware in loop environment. Right. And this is another PLL that we have proposed further to make the PLL adaptive in nature. Yes, this was the work and further we have proposed and we could study. This work also has been published in ITP transactions and instrumentation measurement. That is a novel adaptive bandpass filter based PLL for grid synchronization under distorted grid conditions. Yes, and actually we could come across one of the research paper published in IET renewable power generation that was with the adaptive low pass filter. And we have, we have studied, we could analyze the performance of this adaptive low pass filter. We have observed the response was not much better, but still the, the, the filter is adaptive in nature. Whenever there is an uncertainty, it shows certain adaptivity. But the problem associated with the adaptive low pass filter is and show the performance is not much superior. That is why we have taken an attempt to, to, to study the behavior of a face lock loop with the adaptive bandpass filter. That is what the new work that, that we have studied very first that has been published in high transaction. This is the, 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 uh, the schematic of adaptive low pass filter based PLL. You know, usually any filtering, as, as I mentioned earlier, the, the before the, the PLL is used for measurement or the phase estimation, the PLL can be added before the actual PLL. This stage is what is called a pre-filtering stage. So any the PLL basically adaptive in nature that can be added as a pre-filter. That is what this PL, these PLLs are coming under the pre-filter with adaptive, uh, adaptivity. So this adaptive low pass filter is being available before the PLL for phase estimation, right? This is the black diagram as it has a low pass filter and 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 the, 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 this 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 uh, allows only the low frequency harmonic component. Then it reject all harmonic component. Then that is being available at the input stage of the PLL. Then the PLL can able to estimate the both amplitude as well as the phase angle. Right. And this is the corresponding discrete implementation of adaptive low pass filter that was available in the literature. This is the corresponding, I mean, the low pass filtering, I mean, the transfer function. Actually, here what we have taken an a, a, I mean, I mean, attempt that the algorithm with the adaptive low pass filter, it failed to show the efficacy of the PLL for a phase detection when there would be a considerable DC offset is being injected into the utility grid. 
so that is what the response was much uh, poor in estimating the fundamental phase with the dc offset that is what we have studied particularly a yeah, adaptive low pass filter with the dc offset condition so to estimate the dc offset so first of all whatever be the power quality event that is being created in the utility grid that has to be i mean measured or detected right so as we are assuming the input voltage it has a dc offset so you got to estimate that dc offset that is what we are using this is as a pre filter once you are able to estimate what kind of disturbance it is you can be then that disturbance can be easily rejected by using any filtering right so to estimate the dc offset the input signal vn is passed through a first order filter that you are observing the transfer function so as you need distortionless input because this is a pre filter stage so it will filter out any the harmonic component presence in the input signal so that it produces a distortionless input that is being given to the pll so pll can easily detect the measure the amplitude as well as the phase angle right this is the corresponding transfer function considering v in dash that is the low pass i mean adaptive low pass filter output and adaptive low pass filter input this is the transfer function right and the corresponding the estimated phase and the phase shift that we are deriving here and we will understand the body plot for this adaptive low pass filter and you can understand for the fundamental frequency of 50 hertz and the the the, the magnitude is about minus 3 db and the phase i mean degree is about minus 45 degree all right so it means adaptive low pass filter which allows the particular signal based on cut off frequency if you keep the cut off frequency for example 50 hertz it will allow only the 50 hertz component you don't allow any other harmonic component but if if it has a zero frequency harmonic component it cannot be able to i mean detect the zero frequency that is what the problem associated with the adaptive low adaptive low pass filter that is what we have taken an attempt to, to develop a grid synchronization tool when three phase voltages are having a dc offset so this is the schematic diagram of adaptive bandpass filter it for each phase before it is being given to the phase lock rule via abc to alpha beta or any the sr pll and we use a pre filtering stage this is adaptive bandpass filter and we we we, we produce the distance distortionless input to the pll so that we are able to detect the fundamental phase as well as the phase angle as well as the fundamental magnitude right and this is the corresponding schematic diagram in terms of a feedback closed loop feedback system as the actual theta as the, the, that is being i mean sensed i mean compared with the theta from the integrated then the error is given to the what is called vin this is one adaptive bandpass filter which is available here then it produces distortionless input right so then this will be compared with the reference what we need it should be a, a disturbance free input so then error is being given to the in loop filter pa control this is a conventional phase lock rule right and the, this is what the, the 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 role of adaptive bandpass filter that can be added as a pre filter for any pll stage this is the corresponding mathematical equations and we could observe the um, the the discrete implementation of adaptive bandpass filter and we can see it is a second order a bandpass filtering characteristics as we could see the transfer function the z domain then we could observe the frequency response for the different cable that is k is equal to root 2 k is equal to 0.3 k is equal to 1 by root 2 so ultimately the k is very less value that is one by root two then the response would be much better that the all the ports are on the left half of the s plane and and more of the zeros are in the in the zero axis so that it shows the adaptive band fault it means what a particular band you wanted to allow for example 50 hertz component then you can fix the band corresponding to 50 hertz and another you wanted to i mean uh, reject uh, the zero order harmonic component you fix the band so that it will reject zero order but allow 50 hertz harmonic component this is what the adaptive bandpass filtering characteristics and it shows the whole zero for the different cam value you can understand that at the fundamental frequency of 50 hertz of course the pre filtering magnitude phase angle 0 db and 0 degrees per respectively it means it is allowing fundamental frequency component right so however as, as as i told you the k value is, uh, is is very high value then complex conjugated poles move far away from the imaginary axis i mean it close to the real axis mean of course it increases the damping factor right that is one so the k poles are dominant because these poles are located nearer to the imaginary axis it means k must be very low value right so here k is equal to low mean it is quite i mean nearer to the imaginary axis so that you can show the response 
I mean, dynamic response of the filter, it would be much better when the K value is very low. That is why we have chosen the K value is about 0.5. This is the corresponding stability boundaries of adaptive bandpass filter with the different value of proportional and integral gain. And we have studied for the different case study. And overall, we have tuned the value of proportional as well as integral gain using symmetrical optimization, optimization method so that we could tune and fix the value of proportional as well as integral gain for a different power quality even. So we have implemented and we have studied. Right now, as from the previous study, as I told you that, as we could I, we could see the response is adaptive bandpass filter for the DC offset is excellent, and that now we have we have we have incorporated this adaptive bandpass filter as a pre filter for DQ CDAC PLL and moving average filter PLL. Basically, these PLLs are available in the literature. So that is DQ that is called a I mean a, a synchronous reference frame. Uh, cascade delay signal compensation PLL. This is what the PLL. Okay, this is DQ CDSC PLL available. And before this is being implemented with adaptive bandpass filter as a pre filter. And this is the corresponding discrete domain or realization of DQ CDSC PLL with adaptive bandpass filter. And this is what is called the moving average filter PLL. It is available in the literature, but we have added adaptive bandpass filter as a pre filter for moving average filter. This is the corresponding discrete implementation of moving average filter. Right. So now we have studied four PLLs. So I mean adaptive low pass filter PLL with DQ CDSC and adaptive low pass filter with moving average filter PLL that is two PLLs and third PLL is adaptive bandpass filter PLL with the DQ CDSC and adaptive bandpass filter PLL with moving average filter PLL. So there are four PLLs we have studied that we could compare and overall the study has been presented here for the um, following parameters. I we assume that the input voltage seems to be 415 then we have taken it support what per unit and the fundamental frequency is 50 hertz and the gain value as we choose a uh, uh, symmetrical optimization method for the proportion as well integral gain of the PA controller seems to be 445.46 and the 38.25 for showing the, the system is stable right and this is the response during frequency variation and this is the response the uh, performance comparison the different PL right now this is one of the very important study. You know, we haven't uh, studied about the uh, frequency variation with the uh, modified HTFT PLL, but here we have uh, studied because you know the frequency is a key component that governs power system security. So frequency can be changed at any time because I told you that the renewable energy sources are intermittent nature. The power which is being injected into the utility grid never be perfectly matches with the load requirement. So whenever you find there is a deviation in the power flow between the source and the load, it causes frequency variation. That is what in, in reality, observing the system during grid frequency variation is a challenging task. We have studied that uh, the frequency variation at 0.4 seconds. The frequency has been changed from 50 hertz to 51 hertz till 0.7 seconds. So how the proposed PLL can track the state change in frequency. Right now you see and at, at a 0.4 it is being changed to 51. So now how it is tracking exactly. See adaptive bandpass filter based DQ CDAC PLL the response is much better. It is, it is, it is, it is, it is tracking the step change as quick as possible. It do not cause any peak overshoot and steady state error as well. All right. And this is the, you see the phase error. Phase error is almost zero for adaptive bandpass filter based PLL DQ CDAC as compared to other state of adaptive PLL. And this is the frequency error. Still, it, the frequency C, it is exactly 51 hertz by adaptive bandpass filter based PLL with the moving average filter. And this is the estimated phase and the phase angle as well. Right. And this is the response during high frequency harmonic output. So as uh, along with the fundamental 33 percentage of the third order and a 25 percentage of fifth order and 17 percentage of seventh order and 13 percentage of ninth order and 8 percentage of 11th order is being injected into the utility grid and hence the three phase voltages are highly distorted. So at this stage, we are able to track the fundamental phase. See adaptive bandpass filter based DQ CDAC PLL, it is tracking the fundamental phase frequency 50 hertz. But others, it shows there is a negligence, there is a I mean comparable error in tracking the fundamental phase. And you can understand the fundamental frequency estimation is very accurate with uh, an adaptive bandpass filter based uh, I mean moving average filter PLL. And you see the estimated phase and the phase angle as well. 
And this is the response during interharmonics as we have injected uh, the interharmonic component. Basically, they are non integer frequency component of the fundamental, and we could observe the performance of the different state of path of the PLL. That is, uh, I mean, uh, DQ CGAC PLL, adaptive low pass filter based PLL, adaptive band pass filter based PLL. Overall, adaptive band pass filter based DQ CGAC PLL is tracking the fundamental frequency very accurately at this situation. And moreover, the phase error and the frequency error is almost zero, and still it is tracking the fundamental phase very accurately. Right. And this is the response during DC upset. So, this was the, uh, the motivation behind uh, implementing adaptive band pass filter based PLL that uh, during zero frequency harmonic compound injected in the utility grip state, still adaptive band pass filter based PLL it shows the superior performance. So, it means almost the frequency tracking is much better, and moreover, the phase error is almost zero. And also the frequency variation is not much with the help of adaptive band pass filter based moving average filter PLL. Right. And this is the another important study that we could observe for the three phase unbalanced voltages. This is naturally happens with the utility grip when nonlinear load or unbalanced loads are connected at the PCC. Overall, the adaptive band pass filter based DQ CDAC PLL that shows a superior performance as compared to other state of art of the PLL you can observe from these figures. Right. And this is the hardware envelope results for the frequency variations as the frequencies vary from 50 to 51 hertz. See, a DQ CDAC PLL it shows the dynamic response with the settling time of 84 milliseconds. Right. And adaptive low pass filter based DQ CDAC PLL it shows about 46 milliseconds. Whereas adaptive band pass filter based DQ CDAC PLL the response time is 42 milliseconds. So that has been considerably reduced. Right. And here with the moving average filter, simple moving average filter, it's about 60 milliseconds. And adaptive low pass filter based moving average filter, the response is about 46 milliseconds. But adaptive band pass filter based moving average, the response has been considerably reduced to 38 milliseconds. This is the in phase and quadrature component. This is the estimated phase and the phase angle. Right. And this is the experimental result during high frequency harmonic injection. And when high frequency harmonics are injected, see the response. And uh, the moving average filter PLL, still there is a considerable variation in the frequency tracking. Adaptive left, low pass filter based PLL with moving average, still there will be error. But adaptive band pass filter based moving average filter, it shows a zero error. Right. And you can observe the DQ CDAC PLL and the response under high frequency harmonic injection, it shows there is an error in tracking the fundamental frequency. Adaptive low pass filter based PLL, the error is somewhat reduced, but adaptive band pass filter based DQ CDAC PLL error is completely zero. So it implies tra tracking of the fundamental frequency and the fundamental phase is very excellent with uh, adaptive band pass filter based DQ CDAC PLL. This is the corresponding THDR, the harmonic spectrum of the grid voltages. Uh, this is for the moving average filter with uh, adaptive band pass filter as a free filter. It's about 2.7% and uh, uh, THD is about 0.5 percentage for adaptive band pass filter based DQ CDAC PLL. Of course, it meet the requirements of IEEE 519-2014 standards. Right. And this is the experimental result during interharmonics. So as uh, this is the response with the moving average filter. This is the response with the DQ CDAC PLL with adaptive low pass and with adaptive band pass. See the response, adaptive band pass filter, the response is much better than adaptive low pass filter. But the simple moving average filter still it shows the error during interharmonic condition, right? And this is the comparison with the adaptive bandpass filter. This is the simple DQ CDAC PLL. The response is not good, and moreover, it produces an error in tracking the fundamental frequency. And adaptive low pass filter based PLL still the error is reduced, but still dominant. But adaptive bandpass filter based DQ CDAC PLL it produces completely error frequency, error free frequency. I mean fundamental frequency extraction. This is the estimated phase and the actual phase, and this is the response of in-phase and quadrature axis component. Of course, the THD of the grid voltages with the moving average filter with the adaptive low pass and the band pass filter, and see the response adaptive band pass filter with the moving average. The THD of the grid voltages is about 3.7 percentage, and this is the THD of uh, DQ CDAC PLL with adaptive band pass filter as a pre filter, the DHD is about 3.2 percentage. Right, and this is the experimental result during DC offset. 
and you can see that uh, that the 0.4 second the dc offset is being injected see the dqc dct lf is ultimately unable to track the fundamental frequency and adaptive low pass filter based pl somewhat tracking but still unable to track accurately but adaptive band pass filter based dqc dct pl it is exactly tracking the fundamental frequency and this is the response of the moving average filter based PLL. And see here when the frequency, I mean, when the DC offset is being injected, it's unable to track the fundamental frequency. But adaptive low pass filter based moving average filter somewhat tracking, but still it produces an error. But adaptive band pass filter based moving average filter, it produces error free fundamental frequency traction. Right. And this is the corresponding estimated phase and the estimated phase angle. And this is the response of in phase and quadrature component. Basically, they are a DP axis component with uh, both are sinusoidal uh, responses with a 90 degree phase shift. Right. And this is the experimental result during unbalanced three phase voltages at 0.4 seconds, between 0.4 and 0.5 seconds. This is the response. This is the I mean, response of the moving average filter based PLL. And there is still the error is there whenever there would be a voltage unbalance. But adaptive low pass filter based moving average filter, the error is reduced as compared to a simple MAA field. But adaptive band pass filter based moving average filter, it tracking the fundamental phase with negligible error. And this is the response of DQ CDAC PLL. It's, it's, it, it produces the large error in tracking the fundamental frequency. And adaptive low pass filter based PLL, still it produces the it, track the fundamental but it's not so accurate but adaptive band pass filter based dq cdac pll it is tracking the fundamental frequency very accurately right and this is the estimated phase of the phase angle this is what the response of d axis and q axis component so this is the performance comparison with the different state of art of the pll that is only dq cdac pll and this is simple moving average filter pll proposed in reference seven and eight and this is what adaptive low pass filter based pll with the dq cdac and this adaptive low pass filter based with moving average. And these are the proposed PL. That is adaptive band pass filter based DQ CDC PLL and adaptive band pass filter based moving average filter PLL. We have studied for a different power quality event like a frequency variations, high frequency harmonic injection, interharmonic condition, DC offset, and also three phase unbalanced voltages. And overall, the response of both adaptive band pass filter based DQ CDC. And adaptive band pass filter based moving average PLL, the response was much better than the state of art of the PLL. That is what we could see. The response time is much better. You know, uh, one of the important things we could observe that here as the adaptive band pass filter can be added as a free filter to any PLL structure to extract a fundamental frequency in the phase cycle. Right. And in order to absorb the adaptability, adaptive nature of the band pass filter, and we have, we have proposed a central frequency that is auto adjusted using gradient algorithm for variant distorted grid condition. But I haven't discussed anything on the gradient here. And moreover, we have proposed, I mean, we have studied a 3D surface plot that is for confirming the stability of the adaptive band pass filter. And accordingly, proportional as well as integral gain of the adaptive band pass filter has been tuned. So this study was completely done with a MATLAB simulator and further that has been extended uh, with the hardware and loop environment using DS1104. Uh, one of the important thing we have, uh, uh, we have observed here in the study was that, and we haven't studied anything on the grid fault condition because ensuring the estimation of the fundamental frequency at the fundamental phase during the grid fault is a very challenging task. So that is what further uh, we are extending this study to improve the dynamic response of grid synchronization when the grid is subjected to the fault. So that is what, and th that was the further study and we are uh, extending here and we could uh, done with the grid synchronization using uh, pre-filter based phase locked loops. Right, and these are the key references and mostly we have taken the references from I2P transactions so that we could show the superiority of the state of art of the, as well as the proposed PLL that we could study and we could pay a couple of transactions in I2P. Right. And these are the key references for our study and we have done and uh, almost I come to the, I mean, the uh, concluding stage and further uh, actually I have floated a special issue on electrical engineering Springer, which is one of the very oldest journals in electrical engineering and it's having impact factor of 1.8 and it is a SEA journal and we have proposed uh, uh, call for papers for the special issue on design and control of hybrid energy systems and energy storage for sustainable energy solutions. I am one of the guest editors for the journal, but however, I am an editor of the journal as well. 
and uh, we four august editors involved with this uh, special issue of course uh, uh, the participants are a background in electrical engineering so you are welcoming to submit your fine contribution for this special issue the full manuscript deadline is about the 30th of november and of course, of course the outcome of the submitted paper will be notified before 30th april may 2024 your paper will be published online and you can have a look at this further uh, link so that you will get complete idea about this special issue so please uh, submit your contributions so thank you all for your kind attention so if you have any doubt please let me know now i would request uh, audience to put forward the questions to sir Uh, sir, I have a doubt. Yes, please. Sir, while uh, considering the experimental setup, uh, yeah. how we are introducing DC offset and uh, harmonics frequency deviations in the grid uh, grid supply? Yes, exactly. Your question was very valid. <laughs> uh, this study, as I have mentioned, we have done in a hardware in loop environment. So hardware in loop environment mean whatever be the simulation study we have made it. that has been emulated with the d space dl 1104 controller card so that we could emulate the similar perform uh, performance in the hardware in loop environment so this all power quality even that has been generated in the matlab simulator okay sir. okay sir yeah but sir, in, in more... reality yes in reality yes your your statement is very valid sir in reality uh, how could you observe how could you virtually create the fault in the grid or how you can inject this uh, i mean uh, Uh, what is called uh, dc offset or high frequency harmonic that we go to use a kind of programmable ac source what is called uh, any smart grid emulator or maybe programmable ac source so that uh, we we got another one project with the uh, serb is about 42 lakhs and we go i mean uh, place the, the procurement about the programmable ac source once we have programmable ac source with the same set of what we made it here that can be made it in a real time as well that programmable ac source can act as a, i mean virtual grid so that your inverter output can be interfaced with the utility grid you connect a, a, any non linear load at the point of common coupling yes that is what the further as we are trying to make a complete real time experimental setup okay sir so one yeah. more doubt uh, so while uh, as we know filters low pass filter band pass filter all these yeah. introduce delay in the performance of the controller So, yeah. so in this uh, um, num many numbers of uh, passive filters, band pass filters, yeah. low pass filters are used. Aren't mm. they affecting the performance of the controller? That is what uh, that uh, the, the the loop filter that uh, response is extremely important in integrating or in estimating the fundamental frequency. So these filters all are a recursive filter. It is basically they are the programmable filter that we could make in the digital platform. you know actual whatever be the harmonics they are available in the utility grid or in the inverter output that can be filtered out with any passive filter like a low pass filter either rc filter or rlc filter with the damping or without damping but I, uh, yes exactly you are right if in in uh, real filters they are in incorporated between the inverter and the utility grid eventually it affect the performance of the controller so that as we, as we could do with the hardware look we haven't taken any impact on the the filter which are being available on the output side of the inverter but eventually it has an impact that is what the choosing the filter with the proper uh, i mean uh, with the proper configuration of the topology is extremely important in a real time okay sir yeah thank you yeah. sir yeah yeah that is another area of research you know lcl filter design in the inverter output i mean the filter between the inverter and the utility grid that design is a very crucial part yes considering and the power quality are considering the which kind of harmonic we are going to eliminate and also considering the the uh, that is the stability of the controller the dolls extremely important in designing lcl filter okay so that is an another um, area of study in grid connected uh, renewable power generation system you can find uh, um, a number of interesting papers published by professor vinod jha iic bengaluru you will find uh, he has proposed a lot of uh, design configuration of lcl filter without affecting the controller load yes he has studied it enormously he pro pro uh, he produced one scholar dr arun now currently he has been with iit madras he published number of papers in that okay so thank you very much sir yeah any more hello, questions sir. yes please hello sir uh, this is yeah. rashi sir pradhan 
Oh, okay, okay. From UC Burla. <laughs> Now yes, I'm working in BSS. Microsoft Teams. Okay, okay. okay. So, uh, my question is, um, some of the filter they can uh, be used for uh, control action also, like uh, APFC filter, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and many more filters are there. So, uh, controller uh, filters separately or uh, filter. Used as a controller also, which one is will be more efficient? Input or output side, we 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 connect the filters. Yes, that is what your previous question. Someone was asking. It's it's your question is quite relevant. You know, the filter the controlling me. You are using the filter to filter out high frequency harmonic components present in the utility grid or in the inverter stage. That is what we use the passive filters, right? So, in the in the filters must be a part of the complete grid connected inverter system. If the filters are not properly designed, right? If you are unable to, I mean, uh, filter out a particular harmonic component, the inverter or the grid, eventually it causes a power quality problems, right? Then we we, we will have again additional I mean the uh, the filter what is called active power filter and you can use a kind of a D statcom that is called a distributed statcom or maybe a DVR for that particular study that is completely it's quite a different it, 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 that is in the distribution level right so controller as we are implementing in the digital platform using APG or DSP but the filters are used as a passive filter on the inverter output in the real time right. So how you make a proper coordination between the controller loop and the passive filter design, it has certain impact. Ultimately, the design of filters and the design of controller, both are extremely important. That has to be properly coordinated. If not, then the controller fails to take action. Then even uh, whatever you use the passive filter, eventually they inject the harmonic compound. Right, that is what nowadays you go with the inverter. That inverter can act as a shunt active power filter. Then no need to worry about the I mean the filter because the filter itself it is a controller. That is what it's it's coming under the topic called uh, custom power devices. That is basically a shunt active power filter. Right, that filter out harmonics component and also it ensures sine channel current injection into the utility grid. Even if the LCL filter unable to filter out the harmonic, but this active power filter can nullify any harmonic component presence in the utility grid. Hope you understand. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I request uh, participants if any question can mail to sir. So. Yeah. Now we good afternoon, sir. Any... Yeah. Good afternoon. Hello. Yes. Yes. Good afternoon. Please. Am I audible? Uh, one second, sir. Yeah. Please. Sir, what is the difference between MEI filter and uh, low pass filter, sir? MEAF filter, low pass filter, in as I mentioned, uh, conventional phase lock loop, it has three important components. One is what is called the uh, phase detector, loop filter, and VCO. See, right. This is a uh, loop filter, mean it is a low pass filter that can be designed with a simple PA controller. See the mathematical description of that PA, right. The loop filter is basically a low pass filter. But what you were asking, another one? MEAF. Moving yes, average now, oh. yes, moving over. See, this PLL can be realized in practice with the analog domain as well. Because this is a phase detector. You can have a kind of a summer or the potential divider that can be a phase detector and a loop filter, simple PA controller you can design. And again, VCO can be an analog domain, no problem at all. So this is a simple phase lock loop. It has a loop filter along with the phase detector and a VCO. But whereas the same filter can be modeled in the digital domain or in the digital platform then your loop filter can be enabled as a voltage i mean that is what is called a uh, NC, you were a moving average filter yes and just i'll show you where it is the moving average filter it is a NCO numerically controlled oscillator yeah here i have made it right moving average filter is available Actually, that is schematic I have removed. Actually, yeah, this, this moving average filter means that is being available in the uh, what is called in the digital domain. 
yes as 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 i mentioned that this is uh, digitally tuning and uh, nullifying any hormone i mean the uh, what is called the noise signal presence in the i mean phase detector output right so moving average filter is in the form of digital domain of actual any digital filters but loop filter is a, a simple analog controller available in the simple phase lock mode understand yes sir similarly for yeah. i pass filter also is there any digital filter sir if once you but why why you want to to pass a high frequency harmonic amp that high pass mean what it will pass the high frequency of course there is no meaning of uh, incorporating high pass in this uh, system here uh, no, you are concerned no. not like that yeah. sir actually my yeah. research is power management i want to okay. separate the high pass and low pass like a super capacitors battery at okay. that time instead of using yes. the low pass filter i want to use yes. high pass filter at that time i want to use a digital yeah. filter sir that's why i'm yes, asking that is what i am yes yes so that mm. is high pass filter ensuring and the energy i mean energy storage that is possible but here we have it incorporated in no, not here the the generally I'm, generally yeah. i am asking sir generally yes yes even, mm. even high pass also can be programmed as a digital filter no doubt you can make it in the z domain it is possible that filter what we call sir like a moving average like that we can what we call a high pass high, filter oh, i mean low pass uh. filter I mean that is going to be a moving average filter and what about uh. the high pass filter ah, yeah, yes sir that, yeah. yes so yeah as we are concerning about the grid synchronization with relevant to the phase locked loop and we could study with low pass and moving average so we haven't study anything on the high pass as it is not necessary here so that we don't i don't have any idea oh, on a high pass filter yeah. what is the relevant thing okay right so this is completely it's it's a study about the grid integration right okay thanks yeah 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 now we would like to express a heartful thanks to professor b chitti babu sir Should for his valuable sharing? efforts yes okay. sir I, I, i'm stopping sharing eh? yeah yeah mm. uh, we would like to express a heartful thanks to professor b chitti babu sir for his valuable efforts to make us understand the importance of fast and exact detection of phase and fundamental frequency even under dynamic and polluted grid conditions for smooth integration and operation of solar pv system with grid thank you so much sir okay thank you very much and uh, hope all uh, participants might have somewhat understood about the grid synchronization i mean this topic uh, was uh, i think nobody has covered there would be uh, zero overlapping with the other speakers right so if you are working in a grid synchronization of uh, renewable energy so you, you please send an email if you need any support definitely i shall help you okay so my best wishes and have a nice sunday and even a sunday the team is very dedicated and mona lisa madam and professor p k rai and professor arnab and thank you all for giving me an opportunity and even i could see you all virtually so hopefully we will meet again in offline mode okay thank you all and thank you once again thank you very much sir okay should i leave the session yes sir okay thank you now it's time for lunch break next session will start at 3 pm by professor indrajit sarkar sir followed by valedictory ceremony we are uh, looking forward for your maximum participation to embrace the final session of stem 2023 thank you everyone